Hey guys. Um, I wish that I would have had an adult explain some things to me when I was a kid. And I thought I would do a video for you um, to help you understand some things that I understand now that sure would have helped me a lot when I was probably your age. Um, okay. So the first thing is that you should probably know is now your, your parents may not tell you this. They may or they may not. <laughs> so, and this is just my opinion. This has just been my experience. So they may not even agree with me. However, so the, I had an imaginary friend. I had an imaginary, actually I had quite a few imaginary friends when I was little. <laughs> and I still have them. <laughs> but what I've learned is they're not actually really imaginary. And I know that could be shocking for some of you, but um, I had this, I had this little uh, horse, this little miniature horse, imaginary mid uh, little miniature horse when I was little. And uh, everybody humored me and they were so sweet about it, but I would give them sugar cubes, alfalfa cubes. I would take them to the, I would take them to the local, local barn, the red barn, they called it. It was like a tack and tack shop and stuff. So um, basically I, everybody was really sweet to Charlie. His name was Charlie. And they were like, okay, are you going to invite Charlie to dinner? And, and I would be like, can I please, can he come, you know? And he was an active part of my life and, and wanted to do everything that I was doing. And I loved him so much. And I just wanted him a part of everything I was a part of. And, and he was, he was my very best friend in the whole world. Um, I'm not sure how long that lasted. It was, a, I think it was a summer. Um, I used to live with my dad for, for most of the year. And then I would go visit my mom in the summertime and my mom was handicapped. So she couldn't even, she couldn't even be like a proper mom. She, you know, she didn't know, she only knew probably seven words. So I didn't know how to brush my hair or to put on makeup, or I didn't learn all those other things that girls learned. So I grew up kind of a tomboy anyway. So yeah, I had these imaginary friends and, and people would call me a liar, you know, because I would, one time I saw like a red rainbow tiger in a tree out front, <laughs> things like that. So anyway, one day Charlie came to me. And he said, Amy, you, you need to sit down for a moment. I'm going to tell you something that, that's going to be hard for you to hear. And I said, okay. So Charlie sits me down and he says, it's time for me to go. And I said, what? Why, why do you have to go? And he said, because sometimes um, when you have a friend like me, you can only, you know, be with that person for a while until I start to like, till that, till that little friend starts to disrupt your world. And some people aren't believing you and they think something's wrong with you. And so, you know, we, I gotta go. I, I don't want any harm to come to you. And I just wanted to be here for a while and, and play with you for a while and for us to be close. And I bawled my eyes out. I cried and I cried and I cried for so many days. They worried about me. They wondered if I would be okay. I slipped into a depression as a child even. And I was just so sad. I would barely eat and couldn't come out of my bedroom. And, and I, it was very sad. And if, and if it didn't, if they weren't already proved, if it wasn't already proven, um, if they didn't have enough proof by some of the things that had happened while he actually was appearing to me, they definitely had some proof when I became totally depressed and sad when he was gone, because why would I be so sad if there was never anything there? You know, if I was making it all up, why would I be so sad? So, um, you know, my, my whole life, I kind of felt embarrassed about that whole thing and kind of, you know, I, I would only tell certain people <laughs> that I once had an imaginary horse named Charlie. However, um, as, I, as I grew older and started to love myself and I started to be okay with who I am and started to think I was pretty funny and, th and, and started to think that some, you know, people who could talk to angels and people who could talk to these other beings that we can't see 
were pretty, pretty darn cool people. You know, I started to really look up to those people and that they kind of owned it and they didn't, they weren't scared of it. They weren't, you know, shy about it. They were just putting it right out there. And I thought, I want to be one of those people. You know, I want to see what this is like to actually accept and be okay with, you know, beings that you, that other people can't see because they're closed-minded. You know, I decided those people are closed-minded. I have an open mind. I'm willing to take a look at unicorns, leprechauns, fairies. Why not? You know, so I actually started to do some research and I found, um, and I found that uh, those things are actually real. And a lot of adults cannot see them because they just refuse to believe. There are a lot of things adults believe, you guys, that is just totally false. They've been kind of brainwashed. If you know what brainwashed means, it's like they've been taught for a long time to believe only certain things, very black and white. And so you might be that person in your parents' life, possibly that can show them the magic that still exists out there beyond that, that linear way that they've been taught to think we're in a world right now that is really changing a lot. And you, you guys are going to grow up to be leaders. You probably already are teaching your parents things, right? Hey, you know, that's a lie. What you just said is a lie because you just said this, (laughs) you know, (laughs) things like that. Um, so just, just know that sometime, you know, sometime in the future, maybe even the near future, you might be the one teaching them to have faith in things that they cannot see, you know? So if you have an imaginary friend, I want you to have faith in it. If you have a fairy friend, a unicorn friend, anything like that, have faith in it, know it. Because when you start talking to these other beings, it becomes your world turns very, um, very magical and synchronistic. And you see all these signs and, and all these, and they make you laugh all the time when you're taking yourself too seriously, which is very important. In fact, I was going to tell you too, that one thing that, that adults don't understand either, you know, when you, the older that you get sometimes, and if you haven't worked on broadening your mind, then, uh, then they wouldn't realize this either. They take themselves way too seriously and they don't laugh enough. So um, I think it's so important that we laugh in the mirror sometimes, or if we're really, really upset about something, just laugh and laugh and laugh. Um, so basically here's the, here's the thing I realized too. I'll tell you guys about a dream that I had and I had it over and over and over and over when I was a kid. Um, I dreamt about a dinosaur. And that dinosaur would come down the street and I could hear it. If you've ever seen Jurassic Park and you see like the puddles that would shake when the dinosaur would take a step, that's what would happen. And I would be so scared. I would just shake in my boots and I'd be like, oh my gosh, the dinosaur is coming. The dinosaur is coming. And he would come, he would come down the street and he would look in my windows of my bedroom and of the house that I was in. And this was a dream, right? So, well, a nightmare at the time. And I would look through all the different windows and here he, that little eyeball would drift over and take a look in the window, like, like looking for me. And I was so scared. Oh my gosh. I was so scared. And I'd run from room to room and I'd hide in closets and everything, trying to get away from the dinosaur, trying to help it like, or or keep out of its view. You know, (laughs) I didn't know if it would chase me if I went outside or I would have gone outside, but um, anyway, this, I had the dream every night for a really long time. And it tortured me for a really long time. I don't know how many years that went on, but um, I was scared to death to go to sleep because of this dinosaur. And then finally, one day in my dream, I decided to be really brave because I was so tired of being so scared. (laughs) And I finally, I finally just stood my ground in my bedroom and I put my hands on my hips and I waited for that eyeball to look in the window. And sure enough, here it came. And I was standing there and I was just shaking, so scared. And he looks in at me and I said, what? What? what?" And the dinosaur said, (laughs) the dinosaur said, I just want to (laughs) play. I was like, what? You just want to play with me? 
are you kidding me right now? And I just was like so relieved and so happy. And I, and I never dreamt about him again. <clears throat> However, I have a little dragon friend right now. And he says that he was the dragon that was in my dream. He was trying to show me how to trust and have a sense of humor about things. And to, and to also not think of things as they, you know, just because things have always been a certain way for a while, it doesn't mean it can't change. Your parents might be a certain way all the time, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to suddenly get a sense of humor and laugh at themselves one day. You know, you don't know how things can change. You don't, you don't know that, um, you know, I I'm trying to think of where to go here because I, yeah, but you don't, anything can change at any moment. If you believe you really have to believe and have faith and imagine, use your imagination you know, with my cats, when, when I first got my cats, they were pretty scared. They were a little bit older. I didn't raise them from little kittens. So they were already grown up and they were, you know, pre pretty scared of me. And I just, I just kept imagining them being cuddly. <laughs> and I imagined them being sweet with me and cuddling with me and purring and all those things that I wanted so bad that they wouldn't give me. I kept imagining and believing. And I would, and I would say out loud, I love that they're so cuddly. I love that they're so cuddly. And I love that they make me laugh. And I love that they get me. And I love that they're so sweet. And I love that, you know, all these things that they weren't at the time. And I kept using that to it to create it, you know, because what we imagine and what we think about, we actually created in our world. Isn't that amazing? So that's another key. You know, a lot of adults don't understand that. So um, sure enough, sure enough, I've gotten closer and closer and closer to my cats and to the to the point that they now jump, will jump up on my lap and let me pet them. They'll get under my covers and cuddle with me. If they're scared, they, they, they cling on to me. Um, they're super duper sweet. They're super duper sweet now. Um, so that's just an example. Okay. So, and here's, here's another thing that you should know that humor, humor is everything. And I know I was just talking about laughing. Sometimes I like to laugh for just a few minutes before bed at nothing, or I'll just read a funny book or I'll watch a funny video. We like with, uh, funny babies or funny, um, funny little cats doing funny things or, or dogs doing funny things, but I'll watch something and laugh and laugh and laugh before bed because it really makes your heart feel good as you drift off to sleep. It puts a smile on your face and that's really important. Um, so uh, this, is, this, is, this is something you can think about too. Imagine that there's a boogeyman in your closet, okay? Something's moving around in your closet and you're like, what is that? What's in my closet? If you are, if you are scared of it, just automatically scared of it and assume the worst, oh no, it's a monster. Then you've just given it permission to go ahead and scare you because you're already scared. You're offering, yeah, okay, I'm already scared. I'm already buying into fear. So go ahead and scare me. Okay. However, if you can learn, learn to be more neutral and when something looks odd or different than normal, then if you can just kind of look at it and be like, hmm, interesting. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's see what it does. Let's see how it acts, you know, and you can just kind of observe it or just be aware of it. Then just watch what it, watch what it does and try to have a sense of humor about it. Because I will tell you, I've had other dreams where I have been really scared and I've um, prayed to Jesus and, and prayed to God and, and been so scared. I didn't know what to do. And I figured out the key was to laugh. So um, now if a monster ever comes anywhere near me, I just start laughing and it totally works. They totally leave because um, they can see right through. If you're, if you're actually afraid and then you tell them, you know, um, in the name of God, and they don't believe you, you know, because you're actually kind of scared. They're not going to listen. They're not going to listen to it. They're going to see right through it. So spirits are, are smart. Spirits can sense things about you, just like you can sense things about them. So, um, yeah. So try to be really neutral. Try to try to just be like, okay, well, whatever. And if something happens, laugh at it, be, you know, think it's fun. Think it's funny. See it as funny. 
or, or just make yourself laugh and it can't do anything to you. It can't do a thing to you if you're laughing at it. Okay. Um, I guess the other thing is um, adults don't know what they're doing half the time. <laughs> They act like they know what they're doing because they try to, to, to like control everything. Like they try to, well, if this is in order and if that's in order, then everything's going to be okay. It's just an illusion. <laughs> I'm only telling you that because if any adult ever makes you feel uncomfortable and they, and they can be tricky, but if any adult ever makes you feel weird or uncomfortable or it seems inappropriate at all, run, just get out, just get out of there and go tell somebody. And especially if they tell you don't tell anybody, that means go tell everybody, everybody that you know, okay? <laughs> because somebody will eventually listen to you. If your parents don't take you seriously, then go to your cousin, your grand, your grandfather, your grandmother, somebody who really cares about you and has one of those open minds that I was, that I'm talking about. Somebody who will say, wow, you really, you sensed that you felt that well, good for you for running away. That's the person that you go tell. Now that could be your teacher. It could be, you know, your neighbor, somebody that you really trust that, you know, listens to you that you could tell them I had this incredible, you know, experience with a unicorn that came to visit me and they'd be all ears and they'd be leaning forward and excited. Tell me all about your unicorn. You know, <laughs> somebody like that is the one you want to tell your secrets to. Okay. And if anybody ever touches you or tries to make you uh, do, do, if they tell you to do anything or to get into a car or to get any type of trap, like if they lure you into a room or they lure you anywhere, that you kind of feel like, mm, I don't know if I, if I want to go with them or if I want to do this thing, then you listen to that intuition because God gave you that intuition for a reason. Your intuition is natural for you to understand and to see um, which direction you're supposed to go in, 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 in any given moment. If something makes you feel comfortable and you're having fun and you're enjoying something, then you, you know, go for it. Okay, then you just have fun and you go enjoy that as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. But the moment, the moment something feels uncomfortable or you just kind of pause for a moment and say, I don't know if I trust that person, then don't do it. And don't go anywhere near that person. And you tell your parents, I do not trust that person. I do not feel good about this at all. Okay. So that's one thing that I had to learn too. There was this one time when I was um, in a grocery store with my mom and of course she was handicapped. So she couldn't really protect me. And I knew that. So I had to kind of get tough as a kid and kind of protect myself and her actually. <laughs> so we were in a, a grocery, it was kind of like a grocery store, I guess. Um, and there was a guy who kept following me around and kept looking at me and making me feel uncomfortable. And I didn't know why he was staring at me and he just kept following me around. And finally I went, I marched right up to the nearest cashier that I looked at all of them. And I looked for the one that I thought would be my friend that would be nice to me. And I went up to that lady and I said, excuse me, excuse me. I said, there's a man in an orange shirt who is, you know, who's been watching me and following me and I don't like him. And I don't, uh, you know, I don't trust him. She immediately got on the loudspeaker and she made an announcement throughout the store with the man, with the creepy man with the orange shirt, please leave the store immediately and leave this girl alone. <laughs> I was like, yay. yay. <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> I thought, yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. See, and I listened to my intuition and I knew the right lady to go to because maybe somebody else would have been like, oh, honey, that that man's not doing anything. He's just a shopper. You know, he's just here to buy groceries. You know, go back to your mom. You know, if I would have done that, I could have been in some serious trouble when I went to the car with my mom. Right. He could. I mean, who knows what he was what he would have been planning to do. I don't know. But I listened to my gut and I got out of there. So, and I live to laugh about it today. <laughs> so, you know, um, adults, you know, adult, adults have done some terrible things to children. And you, you might even hear about some of the sad things um, in the days to come. But know that it is all happening for a reason. Okay. Those kids maybe didn't listen to their intuition like you're going to. 
And, um, and hopefully because you've heard me today, you're going to, you know, you're going to not find yourself in a, in a similar situation. Um, also, if you're ever feeling down or if you're ever feeling sad, try to make yourself laugh and lift yourself up out of it. Because the more that we're sad, the more we start to bring things into our life that make us sad and prove why we should be sad. But if we, if we start to see that whatever happens, like try to look at it from, from a, a, a funny point of view or try to see like, like maybe you could sit down and, and if you're, <laughs> I have a little exercise that that's kind of fun. What you do is you think about the bad thing that you don't like, like, um, I don't know, like say you have to take a test and you don't want to take a test. I don't want to take a test. So you say, thank you, God, for making me take this test. Right. And then you think about all the benefits and advantages as to why it's a great thing that you're taking that test, even though you really don't want to do it. Um, and then you, maybe you and your mom or you and your dad can sit around before dinner and be like, okay, okay. So what are the benefits and advantages of me taking this horrible test? Well, I'll be smarter. I'll be, I might be wiser. I'll learn how I will learn about numbers so that when other people learn about, you know, are talking about numbers, I'll know what they're talking about. You know, one time I learned Spanish because everybody around me was speaking Spanish. And so I thought, well, I'm not going to be the only one who doesn't know Spanish. So I want to hear what they're saying about me. <laughs> so I learned Spanish, you know, so you can list all your reasons and you and you and your mom or your dad can just giggle and laugh about some of the answers that you come up with, but it'll help you feel better about anything bad. And it could be like, uh, thank you, God, that I have to do my chores. You don't want to, you don't want to say thank you, God, for it. But you're like, well, ultimately, I know it's got to be good for me, right? Everything is because your higher self, which you cannot see and your guides and your angels and things are always giving you only good things. Even if things look bad, it's a good thing that's helping you to become stronger and smarter and wiser and more resilient, meaning you bounce right back. You may fall down, on, but you'll bounce right back again and just be fine. So um, it's all it's all by design. You know, spirit, the spirit world is always there to support you and to give you love and to help you feel comforted. So if you can look for the benefits and the advantages, even when something seems like a bad thing, Thank you, God, that my, my parents are getting a divorce. That's very common. You guys don't have any, you don't need to feel any kind of shame about getting your parents getting a divorce. It is never your fault, ever, 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 ever. It is just something that parents do sometimes when they just can't make it work. I told you, parents don't know what they're doing. Half the time, they, they really don't know what they're doing. So... <laughs> Even though they act like they do, you know, sometimes they, they just, they just do that. Okay. Now I am the product of divorced parents and I loved it because like I said, like during the year, I would have these wonderful things in my life. And then during the summer, like two, three months, I would have a wonderful time with my mom and I always looked forward to it. So whatever your situation, you can make it really fun. It can be really, really great. Okay. So don't be sad for your mom or your dad making that decision because it's really good for them. When they, when they realize that something is not good and it makes them feel very, very sad all the time and they get really angry and they fight and all that icky stuff, when they finally get away from each other, then they have a chance to be really happy and they can have a life like they've always wanted to with you. And you can maybe have your own room. And all kinds of wonderful things. So you could write down all the advantages and benefits to your parents getting a divorce. You get two Christmases. You get two birthdays. You know, it's it can be a wonderful thing. You have one room that's purple over with at your dad's place. And then over at your mom's place, you get a yellow room or a pink room, you know. <laughs> so think of all the wonderful things that can happen if your parents get a divorce. And even for them, they may find, find somebody they get along so much better with that they're really happy with and they're not fighting all the time, you know. Um, so, so learn to think that way. Learn to think of like, how could this be a good thing? even being sick. Being sick is a really good thing. So thank you, God, that I'm sick. Okay. So how can I, what are the benefits and the advantages? Hmm. Well, 
people feel sorry for me and they come and spoil me and they make me soup and they bring me tea and they tuck me in and they, and they cuddle me and they worry about me and they put a little warm thing on my forehead and check my temperature. And I love the attention. Um, I get to skip school. Um, your body gets to create defenses, you know, your immune system creates defenses and, and antibodies that can fight other diseases after that. You know, like, it's like everything. If you're embarrassed about something your parent does, well, thank you, God, that my parent does that thing. And then you can think about all the different, the different ways that that's actually a really good thing. If you train your mind to do that, you're going to be a very, very strong leader when you're, when you're grown up. And you can help your parents out from anything that they feel stressed about too, because you can say, well, mom, there's this good thing about it. And there's that good thing about it. And your mom is going to be like, Hans. that's true. That's true. You got me, <laughs> you know, thank you. I needed that. Or, you know, or if you learn to have a sense of humor about things also, you can make your mom or your d- dad laugh sometime when they're really stressed and hopefully they're not going to, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll smirk or they'll give you a little smile and then they'll soften as a result, you know, not that you're responsible for your parents' feelings because you're not. That's the other thing you got to understand. Your parents are going to feel whatever they're going to feel, and it's got nothing to do with you. If a bully ever tells you that you're ugly, are you ugly? No, no. If your best friend in the whole world tells you that you're a horrible person, does that make you a horrible person? Not at all. It doesn't matter what anybody says about you. Isn't that cool? It doesn't even matter. Whatever you think about you, that's all that matters, and that's who you really are. So always think good of yourself. Always love yourself. Go to the mirror and say, I love you. Put your hand on your heart. I love you. I love you no matter what you do. I love you no matter what mistakes you make. I love you when you're not there for your mom like you wish you could be. You know, I love you that you don't know how to soothe this person or this situation. I love you even when you don't do your homework. You know, love yourself. Because when you love yourself, you're going to be able to love everybody else in your life that much better and your animals and everybody else involved in your life. (laughs) So talk to fairies, talk to unicorns, have a sense of humor. Don't be afraid of things. If anything sounds funny, you listen to it and you get the heck away from it. And you tell people if anybody does anything to try to harm you or hurt you at all, get away from them. Um. Yeah. And don't listen to anybody and what they tell you about yourself or what, you know, I don't, you know, that person who called me a liar for seeing my rainbow tiger, they were the liar. I saw the rainbow tiger for myself, (laughs) you know, just because they were too close minded to see the tiger doesn't make me a liar. I saw the tiger with my own eyes. And so, you know, what you see and what you experience for yourself, that's your truth. Nobody can say that anything about that, nothing at all. And somebody can think you're ugly and they can say that you're ugly, but they're probably just talking to themselves in the mirror. There's something called projecting that you should probably learn now too. Almost everybody who puts you down or says something bad about you, they are talking about themselves. If they say you're crazy for doing this or you're doing that or for wearing that or or whatever, it's because they would feel really, really insecure. They would feel really worried if they looked like that or if they wore that. So they didn't have the confidence to do it. So they're going to pick on you for not, for not, for going ahead and doing it when really they're jealous. So people, especially who haven't taught, been taught to deal with their feelings and stuff, that's all they know how to do is pick on the other person. So, and if a bully, oh, bullies. If a bully ever picks on you, try this thing. (laughs) See, bullies usually feel like they actually feel the opposite of what you think they do. They don't feel big and strong. They actually feel like little wimpy, little weak, little ants. Okay. They don't feel very strong at all. They're probably being um, hurt at home. They're probably having people yell at their parents, yell at them and say, I don't want you around. You get away from me. I, you know, I don't like having you in my life. I wish you'd go away. They're probably being treated really, really mean at home. So that's how they, that's why they have to pick on you. So, or they just don't like themselves. They're so angry at themselves. They don't like themselves for whatever reason. 
So you um, keep that in mind and what they actually really need is to be heard and to listen to and to be respected. So think about how they're like, you know, bah, 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 I'm going to pull your hair if you did whatever they're saying to you go, wow, look at all that power he has or she has. And they don't even know how powerful they are. They think they're this small, but they're like the, this big giant, right? So in your heart, you just say to them in your mind, you don't say this out loud, but you say in your heart, I respect your power. I respect that. I respect your, look at that power. Wow. Look at that. You know, kind of admire them in a way, not for what they're doing, not the mean stuff, because that's not cool, but it, but you know, just see, see the power behind it and start to like respect and appreciate and think behind what they're doing. I mean, it could be your, your parent could be acting that way sometimes, but just be like, I respect your power. Look at you. Look at you. Wow. Look at you flaring up. Look at you peacock or little, you know, like a, like a rooster. You know, you can kind of make fun and kind of giggle inside and just be like, look at you, look at you. But, but really feel that, you know, really feel that. Wow. And, and I will tell you without you even having to say a word, just feeling that toward them, that feeling of, wow, you're really magnificent. You know, the energy of it is not what you're doing, not being mean, but the energy behind it, the power behind it that you don't realize you have, that's pretty remarkable. When you feel that for the bully, the bully is going to start leaving you alone. So just say it every time they start acting like that, just close your eyes or just think about that. Um, I was on the phone with somebody one time and he was trying to tell me, I, I started uh, started working at this this place. And the guy was like yelling at me, telling me how stupid I was and I should know how to do this and that already. And he didn't know that I was really new at the job, but I mean, he could probably assume, except he was trying to be all above me and whatnot. So he's screaming and yelling at me, murmur, murmur, murmur. And I was on the phone and I just kept saying in my mind, I respect your power. I respect your power. I get it. I respect your power. I just kept saying it over and over and over. And all of a sudden, the guy, stopped. And he said, I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. I've never talked to somebody like that before. And I thought, ah, that's because God put you on the phone with me so that I could learn this lesson. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to tell him that. <laughs> I don't still need to know everything that we know. <laughs> but, you know, I just, I just was like, okay, I, I understand what's going on here, you know, um, but, you know, try it, practice it sometime when you feel threatened by somebody who's kind of being a bully. Anyway, so you don't necessarily have to tell any adults any of the stuff that I'm talking about in this video, you know, especially if you feel like they'd make fun of you or say that it's ridiculous or stupid. Let them go ahead and feel that way and think that, okay? You know, let people have their opinions. Everybody can think whatever they want to about whatever they want to. And if something resonated, meaning that it, it felt right about what I said, it really felt like, yeah, that feels true to me. If anything in life feels like that for you, you know, that's, that's something that resonates for you. That's your truth. And, um, and then you just, you just, you know, take it in, put it inside and say, I like it. I like it. I'm going to use that as a tool now. And you can watch this video anytime. Again, um, if you do have an open-minded parent, um, who, you know, you can share this with and then go ahead and, and you can do that sometime and be like, Hey mom, why don't we, why don't we try laughing tonight? Why don't we have laugh therapy tonight, <laughs> you know, or something kind of fun. Anyway, life can be fun. Every minute can be totally fun. You can start to see angels and fairies and unicorns and leprechauns all over the place. If you just open your mind to see it, I talk to them all the time. Um, I have a wonderful story. I mean, so many wonderful stories I could share with you. I was walking down the, the street one time and my unicorn just appeared but next to me and he was the size of a normal horse. And I was a little bit like nervous, like people are going to see my unicorn. Of course, I had to remind myself that they can't see the unicorn, only you can. So, but I was like, oh my gosh, there's my unicorn. And it's in your imagination. It's not as vivid as, as um, you know, it's not like a real horse was walking beside me. I couldn't see it that clearly, 
But in your imagination, you can feel the energy of, of the being, whatever is there, whether it's an angel or whatever. It's not, you're not necessarily going to see the being like right in broad daylight. You know what I mean? It, it can be subtle, very subtle. But so the, the unicorn popped out of nowhere. And because I'm used to subtle energies, he felt really big and real, right? So um, he follows me to work. And I was like, well, that's interesting. Why did he go to work with me? And, um, and his name was Tristan. Well, when I got into work that day, I went the whole day and I got real tired. I started getting to be toward nighttime. Then I got this really pleasant man who came in to visit me and we were, he, we were getting along really great and having a really fun ta- time. And, and, um, yeah, I just asked him out of the blue. I said, do you ever talk to like, have you ever seen like elves or angels or like, you know, fairies or anything like that? And he said, no. Why? I said, well, (laughs) I have a unicorn and he walked me to work today and it was just kind of an odd thing. He doesn't usually do that. And, um, and he just looks at me funny. And now this is a wise man. This is an open-minded man. He looks at me and he smiles. He goes, what's your unicorn's name? (laughs) And I said, Tristan. And he said, he just lit up and he said, wow. I said, what? He said, the whole reason that I came down here today to talk to you was to find out if my assistant is trustworthy. And my assistant's name is Tristan. (laughs) So you just gave me my answer. (laughs) But that's how magical your life can be. You can have things like that happening all the time. I have fair, a fairy that listens to me, listens to my problems. Sometimes I lay down, lay on the bed and I just vent and I say everything that I'm feeling. And she's so loving and she's so much more compassionate and such a great listener than anybody else in my life. Like she is there for me. She won't make fun of me. She doesn't, she's so loving and kind. So, you know, you lean on your spiritual friends, lean, uh, lean on the little spirits and fairies and all those guys, because they have a great sense of humor. They take things lightly. They don't get in their ego, you know, meaning that they get all bristled and they get, you know, easily upset. You know, they're very, very easygoing, funny, and they'll help you to turn your attitude around um, so you can have more and more happiness in your life. So I hope this helped. <laughs> I send you a big giant hug. I love you lots. And um Thank your mom or your dad if they had you, whoever had you listen to this or watch this, thank them for me and give them a hug for me too. And I wish you the best and I will talk to you later. (laughs) Bye.